okay welcome friends this is the 10th session of home based development course i hope so far you have been able to follow very happy to share this information with you guys now today we will be going deeper into the addressing mode 2 and then 3 so in the last session we saw how internally the arm data path functions when this addressing mode is used so in this discussion we will see what all the different ways we can provide the offset address which is to be added with the base to access the memory okay so this session will cover addressing mode 2 explaining all the formats that are supported i will be giving you sample programs and then what is the condition before the executed uh, executing that instruction and what is the status after that execute instruction is executed and all instructions whenever we use r15 we need to be careful and uh, we have to be aware what is the uh, difference when we use r15 in an instruction so i'll cover about cover that part of part of that here as well as what is the instruction time for executing on load ldr or sdr how much time does it take what are the different cycles used by that instruction that will also be covered and then we will uh, touch upon the address mode 3 for today okay so the addressing mode 2 is supported by nine different formats so this is basically to calculate the address for the load and store instruction to use this remember different kinds of modes are provided by the processor to compute the address where a memory read or write needs to be performed using these instructions now there are nine ways to do it but in this particular mode there are two things now you can either access a word or an unsigned byte similarly store also can either store a word always remember word is a 32 bit value or it could store a unsigned byte into the memory so whatever i speak about the different formats they are all uh, applicable for all these four instructions okay one more important thing that we should remember that there is no s prefix for ldr or str instructions okay you remember s is what if this instruction can it affect the condition flags of cps or or not which is maintained in cps or or not if you remember in a risk architecture all the operations within the processor is done only when operands are on a register correct so load and store actually helps us in getting the data or putting a data into the memory which is not though it is operating one of the registers it is taking either it will be storing the value or it will be reading from memory and then loading it into the register so this is something to do with the getting some data into the processor or out of the processor so there is no data processing involved in this case so for that reason the s flag is not affected by this ldr and str so it is only when some operation is done within two registers the s flag is s that is s means uh, the condition flags in the cps will be affected only when you are doing a data processing instructions but not during the data transfer instructions okay now this is the format so if you see ldr or str uh, optionally you can have mention a conditional statement eq or n e or m i p l whatever and you could say whether it is a byte transfer or not if you don't mention b it defaults to a word transfer 
and there is no S field you can see that there is no S is in a flower bracket like what you have seen in the data processing info. And then there is a destination register whether this value in this register either stored into the memory or from the memory it is copied in ok. Now what is this expression this part of the instruction is what we are going to be discussing in this addressing mode that is how are we going to generate the address from which we want to access from the memory ok what is the address at which we want to do this data transfer. The first example is bit complex but I will explain you so that you understand this because this you are going to be using it in your simulator ok. So, if you want to try out different things with the simulator you should be aware of how to do it you know using these instructions. You might have not seen this equal to sign earlier. This is something to do with the assembler. So the implementation of <coughs> this instruction is also <coughs> partly left to the assembler. Also, it can generate multiple instructions to achieve this job. If you remember, I was mentioning if long 32-bit constant needs to be brought into the register, the assembler could use different instructions it could use MVN or move or it could put a particular constant in the memory and then try to move that using a LDR instruction. So, there are different ways it could be done. So, I am explaining you one of the ways where instead of having it in a fixed location the processor is trying the assembler is trying to get the value using the PC value PC using the PC as a reference. Ok, what is it trying to do? In this assembly code, ok, always whenever I put it in the box, this it shows the assembly code, what is there in a dot s file. I am not showing the full file, our we are interested in only this part of this instructions. Assume we have put a LDR R3, comma equal to num1. Num1 is what? Is a variable which you have declared. Where is it declared? It is declared in a data segment that is represented by a dot that ok. Let me take a pen in case if it helps you. So, dot that is the segment a separate data segment it is something different with the code where you are declared a variable called num1 and you are saying dot word please see that there is a dot before ok it may not be visible from long distance. So, dot word to say that it is a of 32 bit wide and the initialized value is this. Now, what does the processor or the sorry what does the assembler do? It actually allocates a space somewhere in the memory and then it loads it with this value. When you when you are loading this particular program into the simulator you know, you know there is a simulator is having you know uh, some part of the you know memory is code result for code my handwriting is the very bad sorry about it. So, and then some data it has to keep some space for data again you have to remember that I am writing writing like a child do not uh, do not worry ok. So, this memory who decides where the code has to reside where data has to reside the loader which is taking the compiled binary output of this or assembled output of this file and then loading into the memory ok. It is actually you know maintained by the simulator some part of the memory. So, in a typical our uh, simulator or com sim uh, simulator that we are having assumes the code is starting from at the 1000 hex ok. Uh, uh, it could be modified, but this is what it assumes. So, now the code will be here. Now, after the code, you have put a dot data and then num1. So, the simulator is free to you, you know use any you know area to start from and then locate this variable num1, ok. 
it is something to do with the internal uh, organization of the simulator and uh, what the loader uh, is doing before loading a program into the memory for it to run. Now assume that it has loaded in some location and you do not know the address so, so internally in your program you want to use that address for operating on it. So the the instruction provided is for is for that purpose is LDR R3 equal to num1. So effectively the address in which the num1 is located is loaded into R3. Now there are different ways of doing it I will explain you one way it could be done that is with respect to the PC. See suppose if this data is kept within the address range of 32 megabytes and uh, code is here ok and then maybe after some gap data is kept. Now it is easy for the instruction to access the data with respect to the PC the advantage is what PC is already a 32 bit value which is available inside the processor ok PC, PC is 6 you know or 15. So, it has got a 32 bit value so if you maybe add some offset to the PC either subtract it or uh, add it then you can relatively locate where the data is with respect to the PC address. So, what is the advantage we get? We get we do not have to have all the 32 bit value to be given to the instruction you can only give say take the current PC value and then either if you do plus or minus this 12 bit offset ok which could be a maximum of this much why I am saying f there is a maximum value I am writing 3 f it is each f is going to take 4 bits so 12 bits is reserved by the immediate offset instruction. So, I can mention this much of value into the instruction itself using just a 12 bits of instruction to generate any address which is within the range of PC current PC value ok. So, that is why it is used this way and uh, assembler anyway it will know the locator uh, you know, will know that if it has to generate this the data should lie within the frame otherwise the uh, oil assembling itself you may get a error that this is not possible to allocate you know uh, write this way of loading this address ok. Maybe it may use some other way it may copy this value into one location you know exact address where it is stored and then it will access using a memory read. So, it will read a suppose if it is you know you have a very big program which is you know going into few megabytes then what it will do it will reserve one space where it will store the 32 bit value ok where the address ok it will store the 32 bit value of value which is a 32 bit value which is an address where the num1 is located and then it will say that ok you compute the memory uh, you know this uh, address and then load it from there. So, you get a 32 bit value loaded, loaded into R2. So, the, this is another way of accessing a 32 bit into the register. So, this is the way it is done let me first uh, remove all this ok. Now, so this is the way num is uh, data the address where the num 1 is stored is loaded into R3. Other way of doing other address you may be interested in it I want to jump to the label by loading that value into PC directly ok that is also possible PC is what R15. So, we could either do a you know branch or I could assign a new address that PC has to be moved into. So, that can be done by a label followed by a colon then what will happen is the address at which this particular instruction followed by the label is there that is what it actually means. So, when you load this into the PC the PC jumps to this so after executing this instruction it will just start executing from here ok. So, this is also can be done using the LDR instruction this is I am showing you that control flow can be affected by a LDR instruction also 
okay there are branch instruction which we will be covering in the later session but just by loading a new value into pc directly by using this kind of instruction you will be able to change the flow of the instruction okay now these are the things which gets modified r3 is modified here and r15 is modified with the instruction where move is located i hope this is clear to you this is pc relative okay it is done using the current pc value and then adding an offset to that always you remember when we are using anything to do with pc when a particular instruction is executed the actual pc will be plus 8 because of the pipeline okay the pc would have advanced by 8 bytes okay because of that you have to comprehend that in the instruction u means the assembler okay now let us go to the next instruction next example here what we are trying to do i'm saying num1 plus 4 i am interested in wherever num1 is stored or you know it is you know it is in this address and this is the value which is stored there please see that it is a 32 bit variable so you are initializing to 1 2 3 4 which is 16 bits so remaining half per 16 bits will be all zeros okay in the memory and then in 01c which is a 4 byte ahead of it assume that i have stored a value like this okay these are the assumptions how i do i can initialize one more i can put a one more variable and then say dot word okay and then say 0x a b c d so that will take care of initializing the memory with some value now if i need to access this i could access it using num2 also or i can just say num1 plus 4 so this is a fixed arithmetic done by whom it is not done by the processor it is done by the assembler and then the resultant value is kept in the con as a constant please remember when you see this kind of things even in c language if you are ha having a hash defined and then saying that 1 plus 2 plus 3 who is doing that 1 plus 2 plus 3 it is a pre processor it's not done by the program executable program it is done prior to that by the tools so in this case the assembler does it because it can resolve the value of num1 it knows the value 4 and then it knows that you want to add so it can always whatever is suppose num1 is 1000 then it will add 4 and then 1004 will be given as an offset into the instruction now let me show you an example now let us see what is this doing assume that after ldr instruction the next instruction is the move and this is the label okay so the label is actually pointing to the instruction which is next to the ldr which is which happens to be a move and then my intent is label wherever it is pointing i want to say minus 4 that means what i am doing minus 4 means it is this instruction and then i am saying load the r15 with that address that means what this instruction is loading the pc with its own address it is like a function calling a function itself recursive function or suppose you say a while one uh, you know continuous looping so here what happens is when r15 is loaded with its own address the pipeline is flushed and then it will access this instruction fresh from the memory i think it will execute it on execution it will again load the pc with its own address so what happens when you simulate this okay you will not go beyond this the simulator will come execute it single step it you come here and then you try to single step it it won't move beyond because you are effectively loading the same address into pc so that means it will come back again access the same instruction so it cannot go anywhere other than executing this instruction continuously so i want you to try this out in the simulator and see yourself how what happens so this will give you a clear idea how these things work okay is very important to make sure that you try out 
all these examples that I am giving in the lecture. Okay, so this is all about first mode. It has taken little more time, but once you understand this, I think you know you will be able to follow the other mode pretty easily. Let us go to the next one. Again, I tell you, this is we are trying to see what all different ways I can generate the offset that is this portion ok. Now the offset is generated using this one this part of the instruction and what is this R and this is the base register remember this is base register means assume your memory is there ok the base register R and is pointing at the one location here and with respect to this either you can go up by plus adding an offset ok by plus or you can subtract some offset and access some locations which are below it. that is why the R and is called a base because you are accessing it based on this address you are accessing trying to access different locations around it. Now there are different ways we can do that. So, to achieve that we are using this instruction now. Now let us see what are the key conditions here I am saying R1 is always pointing at this address ok I have already taken care of using a loader instruction I have taken care of initializing them and I have also taken care of initializing the memory also with this content. So, please for any example that I am showing going forward this is the condition ok pre condition before executing this particular instruction. Now what is it doing loader load register which register I want to load R5 with what a value from this address calculated by this. Now I can give plus or minus Rn so which is Rn and which is Rn R1 is Rn. R6 here is Rm. So, I can give plus or minus. So, I can free to I am free to give a minus also here, but in this case I have given a plus ok. So, what happens R6 is what is it having? It is having 4. So, 4 is here and R1 is already having this value. If I add 4 to that because I do not mention any minus, then it is implicit that it is a plus. Otherwise, I should have mentioned it as a minus. Now, because I have not mentioned anything, it takes it as a positive plus. That means I am interested in accessing the location which is 4 by ahead or farther from where the R1 is pointing at. R1 is currently pointing at plus 1 8. So, I will be accessing what this address. Now, what is the what does it signify when I am mentioning it inside a square bracket? I want the processor to do this addition, ok, or subtraction based on what I have mentioned, and then use that address to access the memory, ok. I am very clear if I am mentioning inside a square bracket, please use what is inside, what have I given you, use that arithmetic operation, whatever you are supposed to do, do that, and use that address to access the memory and copy whatever is there in it into R5. Now, how much I need to copy? I have not mentioned a B here. So, I is a word ok. I need to copy a word the whole word. So, in this case one C is there and then this whole word A B C D is copied into R5 that is what I am showing. Please remember 0x a b c d means it is not a 16 bit value please always whenever I say R15 or in any registers we mean that it is a 32 bit value. So, it shows that all 16 bit values move into it ok. So, in a hexadecimal you do not have to mention the zeros right uh, whatever zeros here. So, I am just showing the you know the most re relevant part of the value. Now, what happens to R1 and R6 which is inside which is used inside 
in this case they are not modified both of them are not modified i will show you some example where it is modified in this case both r1 and r6 are intact it only uses the value and computes the address and then use it for the generate you know starting a memory cycle and reading it from the memory and copying that value into r5 i hope this is very clear to you very simple but i am just explaining you more so that any you no know, doubts are there in your mind so what is the name signify register offset that means the offset value is inside a register okay that is what it means what is pre indexed we are what is pre first of all pre is doing something before okay so before accessing the memory i want to do the calculation that's why it's called pre why is it called indexed because i am indexing the memory from the base plus something i am doing and then trying to access it so you, if you see in a typical c uh, world suppose that there is an array with five what we call this five as is an index correct this is an index now the array a could be starting from this address okay which could be again i am very fond of 1000 let me write 1000 and then suppose if i am saying this is a type int in a 32 bit processor okay so that means what each element of this array occupies 32 bits okay so a of 0 will be where it is will be it will be in 1000 a of 1 where will it be it will be in 1004 you agree understand now suppose a compiler uh, needs to generate assembly code where you are accessing for, for loop and then a of i you are doing i is maintained in the i is a variable local variable which you are used in a for loop and then you will be accessing i plus plus and then a of i equal to Ten, uh, or you may say that j another integer is equal to a of i. You may do any of this, right? How does the assembler generate code for it? A compiler generates the code for it. It will maintain this j variable in one of the registers. It will maintain the index variable i in one of the registers. Okay, and then it will be using this to access the array. so it can use this instruction by keeping a four here okay because it has to advance it by four bytes okay and then whenever you say i of 1 that one will be into four okay so it will put that value so that it can use this instruction to access the any element of the array so that is why this kind of instructions are provided okay it is to enable the compiler to generate optimum code okay to access the memory so r1 we can be loaded with the base address of a where the a array a is starting the 1000 and then it will keep on modifying the index register to access any of the elements here okay so that is a very easy way of doing it that is the reason this instructions are supported by the process and you might have seen in 8086 there are multiple addressing modes and similar to that here also multiple addressing modes are supported by arm it is given here now what is this write back okay what does it mean see whenever i am accessing the memory i am asking the processor to compute it a new address based on the value in arcx but i am saying that please don't modify the original content of r1 and r6 why you do this that is what i am saying no write back so you do, every time you compute the address and then use it okay next if i have another instruction called ldr r5 r1 r6 it will access the same location or you can say r6 you can put increment by you no know, add r6 with the four then it will jump one by one okay so it then means it will access one address at after another address but it won't modify the values in r1 r6 in this instruction okay that's why i'm saying r1 r6 no change 
I hope this is clear to you. Let us now go to the next mode. Here, if you have noticed, one new word has come: a scaled register offset pre-index and known right back. So the whole thing is same, except that it is a scaled. What does it mean? Let us directly jump. I have not explained about this anymore. You are already clear. See here. Earlier in section, we saw only some register mentioned and then a square bracket came immediately, correct. Now, what is happening? We have added one more. So, if you again remember, base register is Rn and the offset register is Rm. So, what happens? The Rm You can make code right. This is the ALU. I'm shifting. I'm showing it as like this. So RN is coming from the register file. RN is coming through the barrel shifter. So now I can give some command to this a hey, barrel shifter. Do I want you to do this job on whatever RM you are reading from the register file? And then give it to ALU for generating the address. This is the address that I am interested in the processor accessing it. Okay, this is what ALU is it clear to you? So, what is the operation need to be done? Logical shift write. Logical shift write is you have 31 32 bit shift write. Logical shift right, you will be adding a zero here, and then three three bits by three bits, so it will be shifted by three bits, and whatever goes out will be thrown because it is not going to affect the carry flag because there is a no possibility here because there is no yes here. So during the address calculation, the conditional flags are not affected, so it goes off. Now what happens? You generate a Whatever is R6, you are going to be shipping it by 3 bits. Now, what is in R6 now? It is actually 1, 0, 0. Okay, or these are all zeros. If you shift by 3 bits, what happens? This 1 goes out of the register, right? So, if R6, the shifted value, the whole thing becomes 0. And then, whether you are adding here, you see plus or minus is there. So, I have not put minus here, so it is a plus. So, 0 is added to R1, R1 is already pointing at this location. So, effectively, you are not doing anything here, which is because it is as good as mentioning it as R1. But for an example, I have given you this, okay, and uh, it will be executed the way, way it is intended because assembler or a compiler cannot optimize this code because it does not know what is the value of R6. When it is executing it, okay. So there is no, don't think that okay, some some optimization will remove this instruction and put only R1. And then moreover, you are not wasting any time also here. Okay, the same number of cycles will be taken by this instruction, irrespective of whether you mention any LSR or not, it will be same. So what effect effectively happens is it is actually accessing from the same location. I hope this is clear to you. Again, here the values of R1 and R6 are not changed. Okay. After all these operations, understood? That's why it's called no write back. You are not writing the newly computed address into the R1. You are not writing it. The address you are just computing it and using it, and then throwing that value. Okay. Later on, you will again compute it. Got it? Okay. Another type of instruction. Here, it is an immediate. Pre index and no write back. So, what does it mean? Instead of a register, a immediate constant is given. Now, what is that uh, width of this 12 bits? Okay. And then you see here, you please remember minus is here after the hash. So, this minus is used by the instruction while encoding this instruction. Okay. But the constant what is stored. In the instruction is just a 0x04. Okay, it is not. Please don't think that it will be 
Two's complement of this will be found, and that will be stored as a instruction uh, into the instruction. No, it is a incrementing or decrementing operation is performed by the instruction inside the processor. So this plus or minus will be considered, and then inside one of the bits will be set or reset. I explained to you in the last class. So what happens? Uh, what happens is this zero x four is stored as a immediate constant. So effectively, what is happening here? It is taking the value stored in R2, subtracting a 4 from there. So what happened? It is now R2 that address is becoming a 18, and then that is being accessed, and it is loading. So it is loading the value into the register. So R4 becomes 12340001234. Got it? This is the way it is done. So why is it called pre-index? Because we are doing the arithmetic before accessing the memory. And why is no write back? Because we are not write, writing back the R2. We are not disturbing R2. And then why is it called immediate? Because we are using we are using an immediate constant. That's it. Okay. Very good. Now let us go to another instruction. You may wonder why there are so many types of instruction. Because it is the flexibility given to the compiler to use any of them based on the need. Okay. So complex. Data structures of your high-level program, as I told you, how array is accessed. You could have an array of structures. So, if you want to access them, then also there are instructions to support it. Now, take an example here. It is a register pre-indexed with write back. So that is the difference. You might have, you might have noticed this earlier, but this is I am introducing for the first time. So you saw this R2, R6 earlier, but now I am showing you there is an exclamation mark. Okay, this is a part of the instruction. Okay, now what is happening is it is doing the same pre-index. That means calculating the address because it is within the square bracket, so it is calculating the address to use the is it in a memory cycle but now it is the processor is told whatever you compute write it into r2 now okay so r2 will be modified with what value because you are adding 4 to the existing r2 value uh, sorry you are subtracting 4 from existing r2 value so it will become 18 so r2 becomes 18 after this particular operation so it will access the same value from the memory there is no change from what you saw only thing is the newly computed address whatever was used for accessing the memory is now copied into R2. So what is the advantage suppose if you are using this instruction in the you know the same instruction again suppose if I had put the same instruction in LDR R5 R2 minus R3 if I do exclamation mark it will not access the same location. Okay, now it has accessed this. After this, it will access this. So it will keep on going forward. If based on okay, sorry, it is the minus I am doing. I am still forgetting about I am doing a minus. So it is, in this case, it will go down. So it will access some location which is below. If suppose if I had put a plus here, then it will keep on accessing towards increasing address from the base. Okay. So the base is kept on either incremented or decremented and that the new value is stored in the base. So base is modified. So earlier I showed that base is stationary and then offset is added. Now base is also moving every time when it is accessing by a fixed amount. Okay. So it keeps on either moving up or down based on whether you have put plus plus or minus in the instruction. So that is why it is called write back. So you the new value, new address what you have computed is written into the base register. Okay. Got it? So let us move to other one. Now we are seeing an example of some write back. It is a pre-index. So this I have already explained you. It will do this shifting operation or whatever, and then the new computed value is stored into register. Now, if you want, you can just see R1 is having a one. So it is logical shift left by two bits. So one will become what zero zero one. If it is shifting it by two bits, it will become to the left, to the left. Okay. 
it will become 1 0 0 that means it is 4. So, 4 is subtracted from R 2 again it is now brought to this address. So, so you are getting 1 2 3 4 in R 5 and then R 2 is now changed to 1 ok got it. So, this is the way the accessing of this is done I am just showing you different things. Please remember there is a exclamation mark that is why it is modifying the address of the base register. Very good. Shall we move? So far, I have not mentioned something very different. Let me uh, let me tell you. Now we have seen only the pre-index so far, right? What is post-index? Let us take an example first and then I will show you about this. So, here see this R2 is just sitting there, this this is the immediate constant I am subtract I want to subtract, but I have moved this out of the square bracket. So, what does it mean? I want the processor to use the current value in R2 to access the memory and then subtract a 4 from that address and load it into R2 ok that is why it is called post index it is then after the access is done ok. See the difference if it was inside then it would have done the computation and use that for accessing now because it has gone out it is given outside the inside outside of square bracket it uses this just an R2 whatever is there in R2 is used for accessing the memory and then it is changed. Now, what exactly happens R2 is already pointing here right. So, it copies that ABCD into R5 correct and then it changes because you are subtracting 4 from it it changes R2 to this. Now, you may wonder there is no exclamation mark here why it is also a optimization in terms of instruction format done by ARM this is very innovative. See as a assembly programmer or as a compiler I have put something here ok doing some minus 0 4 or shift left some operation I am doing I will not be doing this if I am not interested in changing this register right. If I am not interested in changing it I could have just mentioned you know LDR R5 comma R2 no need of mentioning anything or I could have just say is 0 x 0. So, I have an option to say if I am not interested in writing back I have an option to either throw this out or not completely do not mention it or mention it with a 0 then it is say as good as saying not to change this value. That is why the processor is internally does not say in the post index format it does not say it has to write back it always write back in post index format. That means there is no need for you to mention the exclamation mark please remember that if you do so it will give a error. So, I hope you understood this because if you are interested in doing something you are interested in doing this arithmetic operation on the address after the access only to save that otherwise what will happen suppose you do some value you know some pressing or plus or minus or some shift and then you do some plus minus, but if you do not write into R2 what is the use of doing this whole thing because it is anyway it is not used for accessing the memory because I are accessing the memory are using the same old value then what is the need of mentioning this. So, if you are mentioning it that means it is implied that you are interested in changing the value that is why the uh, you know ARM designers have you know using it internally for some other purpose that if you are doing this I will always in post index I will do modify the R2 ok. So, there is no separate symbol for this and I do not treat so, you know differently for a post index always I will update the register base register if it is a post index. Now, post index how will it know it will know that if the constant or a shift operation is outside the square bracket. So, it is very easy for it to encode the instruction accordingly I hope this is clear to you. So, you also see the value what is being copied 
R2 is already pointed here, so ABCD is moved into R5 and then it is subtracted on 8 is subtracted, no, 4 is subtracted, so it will come here, ok. R2 is changed without estimation mark, R2 is the base register is modified. Please remember that, ok. And the offset is 12 bit because immediate constant. So, it is always a write back in a post index format, very good. Now, we are coming to the end of this different modes. You see here register post index and always write back. So, you can as well mention a register also and you can mention plus or minus. Now, what happens R6 is 4. So, you access as is whatever the value it is R2 is pointing ABCD is moved into R5 and then you subtract 4 from it. So, make it 1 8 that is all very simple. Now, by now you are very you should be very familiar that if I give any instruction you should be able to understand what is happening. Please try out different things in the lab session and all the modes you should try out and see how it functions in the simulator so that you will have a better idea. So, what do you do like what I did initially this with the, the num1 and the instruction LDR instructions that I showed you in the beginning use them to load these values with the proper addresses and initialize this memory with these values with a dot word and then 1 2 3 4 you can write you know I am writing 1 2 3 4 to just every byte is this you no know, every nibble is different that is why I have chosen this value so that I can show you some examples. So, put this kind of values and then try to access them from the memory into the register then store some value into the memory. So, whole lot of things you can do using these instructions and different addressing modes. So, be familiar with this you may wonder I may decide to not to use any of this mode I will use only one mode. So, why should I understand these instructions please do not take that stand you can decide not to use some instruction which you are not comfortable when you are writing assembly programming, but if you are seeing a assembled output of a compiler you do not have any choice compiler decides what instruction to use based on which is optimal which is efficient which is suitable for the particular code that you have written and you are debugging it and there is a crash and you are looking at the memory and trying to look at all the instructions which are being executed and there is some when some instruction is executed there is a abort. Now, you have to understand the instruction flow which is generated by the compiler you do not have a choice you can leave some instructions which I am not very comfortable I do not like this instruction so I will not learn about this instruction you may decide and you may not use that instruction in your assembly code fine, but you cannot take that stand when you are looking at the assembly output of a compiler. So, if you want to be a good programmer and and a good embedded programmer understand every instruction of a processor, because you do not have a choice in which instruction is being used by the compiler. And when you are looking at the code which is generated by the compiler you better understand all the formats of the instructions. So, please pay attention to every mode and try out every mode in your uh, lab session, so that you are comfortable with all the instructions ok. I hope you understand the need for it I am not trying to sell all the instructions here ok good guys. Now, you can sigh a relief we are going to come to the last is now the session is not over, but uh, this addressing mode is coming to an end this is the last mode because you see the 9 I told initially 9 modes are there. So, I have not missed anything in between if you are keeping track of the number. See here whatever you saw inside a square bracket now I am putting it outside and then I am not saying anything here. So, what does it mean whether I mention it or not the register the uh, no the processor is supposed to First use this value what is in R1 to access the memory and then <coughs> compute this offset and then do add or subtract based on what is mentioned <coughs> into R1 and overwrite R1 ok <coughs> always write back <coughs> sorry. <coughs> now, you see that here is this also I have given uh, I am sorry I have given all LDR examples but you know in the later sessions I am having a SDR you know 
example so you can try doing that with anything it's not that you are do only all this format with ldr ldr is simpler because i'm not modifying the memory is show is easy to show you <coughs> with the same example precondition but i encourage you to use str also with all the modes so that you understand the implications of them you can do all the all of this mode using str also okay now let us understand what happens here by now you should be able to clearly see that see arithmetic shift left what is arithmetic shift left left is what this one right which register r7 what is r7 is having now it is having 1 so 0 0 shift it by 2 bits it becomes 1 0 and then i am doing plus or minus r7 i am doing plus okay for a change i am doing a plus here because i have taken r1 here so r1 is pointing here i am doing a plus 4 here to r1 so r1 will start pointing at this location that's what is happening here got it and but it would access this value because it is a post index it will use the value what is in you know what was there inside and then it modifies it with the by performing this offset addition or subtraction based on your insert i hope now all addressing modes are clear to you okay enjoy the lab session with all of them okay now let me tell you some how it is implemented inside with some example some more data uh, if you remember there was a w bit maintain inside the instruction format to say whether it is incremented or decremented and then with the optional write back okay if it is one you modify the base return back into the base used for pre index okay the old value base value is not disturbed if it is zero okay so if it is one the change the base address is written back into the base that means you have mentioned this okay and it is used this is used for only pre index if you remember in post index you don't use it but anyway it is default assumed to be write back so in the post index Uh, just for your uh, remembrance, I am saying what is post post index. So the calculation of offset is outside the square bracket. That means post index. So default this is anyway written into it because if it is a post index, it, since it is going to be written always the value, the W bit is not used for a post index instruction. Okay, in a post index instruction, W bits purpose is different that is nothing of concern to you this time telling you that this is the way the process is implemented so write back bit is redundant for in a post index because there is a separate bit is maintained whether it is a pre index or post index in the instruction format so you don't need two bits to say to do the same thing because in post index we have already said that in a post index this offset what is computed has to be written right back in written back into our base register so do you want, we don't want to say the processor they don't want to use the same function in a right by saying that right bit is also one so they want to use it for some other useful purpose so they made this right back bit is zero in case if it is always they make it zero in the post index format but they will write back the processor will write it back into the base register please remember that okay and if you don't want to actually write back anything please make this whole thing as zero or don't even mention it. then it won't be disturbed the r the base register will not be disturbed now you may wonder why arm designer uh, why they have have they designed decided to do this because they want to use this write back for some other purpose in the post index data format in a privileged mode okay so what i mean by that is maybe i will give you a slight exam uh, explanation here later on when we are talking about mmu we will talk about it see see a processor is here cpu okay cpu means the whole chip and inside that our arm 7 pdm is sitting 
it is accessing a memory using a MMU it could be inside also ok SOC MMU can be inside MMU is what memory management unit. Now when it is in privileged mode it is in operating system is running and you know that if you have a basic OS understanding then OS memory space is different from the user memory space. What I mean by that the MMU makes sure that user do not address the OS memory space because they can come and corrupt the OS data structure or code by writing some erroneous code in the user space or maybe by mistake they do or by intention ok malicious software can try to modify the OS code. So, MMU makes sure that if you are in user mode you are not allowed to access the OS space that means what MMU always make sure that in the system mode when the OS is running it will always map to the memory addresses generated by the processor to the OS memory space. Now there are occasions where see the OS ok the OS needs to access the user space why suppose if the paging is involved and then you know some data one page of the user space is outside the no, it is not got a demand paging is then it is in the hard disk and it has to be moved into the user space it needs to be copied into the US users memory space. So, when it has to be done it has to say I am not interested in accessing my own space, but I am interested in accessing the user space. So, to indicate that they have used this W bit internally by the processor. So, processor is aware which mode the processor is running if it is in a system mode it knows that ok OS code is running now. So, if the W bit is set then it can be used for informing the MMU to access the user space for copying some code from disk to user space or something. So, for this kind of operation this is done we may spend some time on this later when we talk about MMU. So, I did not want the continue to be to, to be lost so I am explaining you here ok. I hope you got this. Now, I am going to talk about the addressing mode to access the unsigned byte ok. We we wrote so much about uh, examples we saw with the LDR. So, I am I want to show you using one of those modes to access a byte ok. So, if you remember if LDR is just a word access LDR B is a byte access. Now, assume this is the way a memory is organized I have now I am interested in showing you byte level. So, I have put it this way and then please remember whether you are using this this whether it is written this way or not depends on the NDNS of the processor. Assume the processor what I am having right now executing is in little Indian mode ok. The simulator also what you have what you will be using in the lab session always maintains it in little Indian mode. So, what does it mean? Suppose you are interested in storing this value in starting from this address the low least significant byte will be stored here and then the next byte 5 6 will be stored in the next address so on. So, 1 night is having a 7 8 1 9 has 5 6 the next address has 3 4. So, it is going in this order starting from the least it is a little Indian. Now, you know why I have mention different nimbles with a different values so that you can understand how it is organized in the memory. This is the way it is organized ok. Now, if you are interested in accessing a byte you have to say which byte also. So, in this case R 2 is having is actually at you know pointing to this address and then you are saying plus 1 that means in this. So, you are interested in a byte access. So, only one byte stored here is accessed and moved into the register. Now, please remember register is a 32 bit value. So, if it is writing E f 
you should also make sure that other bits in the registers are all made zero you may wonder why is it required i am only interested in copying a byte loading a byte from the memory assume if r5 before this instruction was executed was having some okay some value a random value okay like this only if you if the load ldr d modifies only one lsd what happens to the remaining bytes in the register because later on this r5 is going to be r5 or whatever the register you are used will be accessed as a 32 bit whole 32 bit will be accessed so you are going to likely to get into problem if you don't make sure what happens to the upper byte so if you intentionally you want to only copy one byte you may have to double it out with a two registers being used and then r it with the other values and all that but otherwise this instruction takes care of uh, making sure that the higher nibbles are made zero and similarly this r2 is not modified because there is no this sign okay there is nothing like this so it doesn't modify so you i hope you understand what is the byte access now if you recall i mentioned that when the byte access is done if it is a store it will the same byte value will be put across all the you know 32 bit uh, data bus all the bytes will be written with the same byte value so that memory can use it in a way it wants here in a loader so only one byte comes from the memory and then gets into r byte here okay very good now let us see one more example here I am interested in third byte from base which is our base R2, so R2 is still pointing here only, so please remember this instructions are all independent ok, they do not uh, all of them assume the precondition is this, there is no effect of this instruction on this instruction, so it always assumes the precondition is this, that is the way I have know shown all of them so that you understand the different instruction usages. So here plus 3 means R2 is originally here so 1 will be bring here 2 will bring here 3 will be brought here so you are interested in accessing A B stored here so that is what coming here R5 and then the higher nibbles are made 0 got it and R2 is not modified because you are not mentioned there. Uh, as per not you, I have not mentioned the estimation now. Okay, so we are done with that. Let us see a few more examples where I am scoring a value. Okay, store byte R6 into R1. When we say byte, okay, always the LSB of R6, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, uh, I'm going the wrong uh, direction. It should be this way. Sorry. Yes. Uh, okay. Sorry. I'll have to erase it. No, I don't want to confuse you now. See, here storing means this way only. We are doing the value in R6, which happens to be a four here. The LSB is zero eight zero four. Okay. LS byte. Please remember a byte is 8 bit quantity, so that will be a 0 4. Now R6 is loaded into R1, R1 is pointing here, so that is why you see that only this byte is changed. Got it? Store is always this way from register to this, we are storing the value, register content, store register, store the register a byte value only, so you are doing this. One more example. Suppose R1 we are adding it with 0 1 because initially R1 was our condition is R1 is pointing at 1 8. So I am adding it with 1 and then using it here, ok. So R1 is made point here, that is why you see that only this byte is overwritten with a 4 because R6 is having a 4. If suppose R6 was having a value 1 4, you would have written, you would have got. 1 4 getting getting written here ok. So, the adjacent bytes are not disturbed 
please remember only the particular byte gets returned into though i say that data memory you know all four 8 bit values will be sent with the that four whatever is this is only used by the memory to extract one of the values and then write into the relevant byte so it will not write in all the places so only that location will get modified i want you to try out this so that you understand what is happening with the byte of okay got it so i have given examples for load byte as well as store byte so now let us see what are the special conditions you need to remember with r15 because r15 is always our special register right so the arm architecture they say do not okay they say must not be specified the right back must not be specified if r15 is specified as a base register base register is rn in, in case if you have a rn as r15 please don't mention this that's what they are saying but our no our simulator allows this but it will result into um undefined instructions or it could result in the erroneous execution so they advise that don't do it i'm not sure whether the simulator is why is allowing but please refrain from using r15 as a rn okay there is no need for you uh, okay that is what is that suggested by the processor designer one more thing we should remember that when using r15 as a base register even if you are using a base register without a write back you may use it okay without a write back you can use a base register you have to remember that the value what you will be getting is not the address of this instruction but plus 8 that is because of the pipeline i have explained you multiple times the pipeline because of prefetch r15 would have advanced to plus 8 so the operand is read only in the execution stage of the instruction it is not read ahead so because of that what you will be getting r15 as the r15 value is not the current pc value but the when i say the current pc value means the pc value of this instruction but plus say so you have to comprehend this when you are writing assembly code or the compiler also will be aware of this and they will generate the code accordingly okay this we should be aware and then one more restriction is there that r15 must not be specified as a register offset also so rm is here so do not mention r15 and do not when you say rm cannot be mentioned as r15 you cannot do any lsl or any operation on this also okay because it might lead into a erroneous execution so that's all these are the restrictions with the r15 so every instruction will have some special restrictions for r15 so i thought you should be aware of it this is all what is mentioned in the arm manual okay be aware and then about store there is a one more thing you should remember okay if you recall the data path for the load and str in the last session what i mentioned i told you that there is one more cycle taken for writing back the value into r right whether is write back is there the same value will be written back or the new offset value will be write back is a new offset value will be written back so one more cycle is taken so why r15 in the you know when r15 is a source register of the register store information instruction the stored value okay the stored value will be address of the instruction plus 12 why because if you recall the address generated by the data path inside the processor is always it generates the address for the next cycle okay so let us say let me explain you uh, if you recall we had shown a pipeline str was here if you remember add to add was there one after the other okay so i told you that when str is there it is storing a value from the register to the data and memory so what happens is it will be doing on a you know internal cycle and then moving that value out through the data bus okay 
Now during that time, the prefetch for this register is already started because that address is generated and then it, it was put in the address bus because while the storing is happening, okay, the previous the sorry the next address switch is already starting. So because of that, the R15 would have been modified to access the instruction after add. That means what this is plus four. This was plus eight. Now when you actually you are storing the R50 when you are accessing it from the register file, the R15 is already pointing at plus 12. That is why you are seeing this plus 12 here. I hope this is you are able to follow. It is only a special condition where R15 is used because none of the registers contents would have been modified because of any of the uh, pipelining operation. But R15 is a unique thing because it gets incremented automatically. So, if you use that value to be saved into some memory address, you are going to access this R15 only in the late part of the game. You generate the address for the memory and then you start prefetching the next instruction and then during that time you are going to trying to save this value. Address generation is started and then you are saving this value. That time what happens? Because you are already generating the address, the R15 would have been incremented already by 4. So, you will get a 12 instead of 4 in this case ok, it is a very very unique case uh, some of the simulators may not simulate it fully. So, it depends on the implementation of the simulator, but please remember this is the way internally the processor comes out. So, that you should be clear. So, that is why I have given examples for each of the cases ok, mentioning about the different write back uh, different ways R15 could be used. Okay, good. So this is the very complex part of that. Whenever you use R15 in your code, you better be aware that you are going to cause some side side effects. So be aware what you are doing. But I still encourage you to change this, try it out, and see what happens. Because as I told you, when you encounter this instruction, you should be in a position to understand what happened. So unless you try out an instruction, you cannot understand it. Ok, so we are coming to the last part of this address mode 2 is a instruction timing. So, what is that I am showing here ok, if you recall I have mentioned about this cycle uh, internal cycle is something which is like you know incrementing the offset value and then computing it internally data path is doing something nothing to do with the memory access that is called internal cycle. What is sequential cycle? it is a accessing of a PC you know it keeps on accessing the from starting from address a next subsequent addresses are accessed from the memory instructions are accessed by sequential address. Similarly some block of memory when you are doing a multiple load the data also can be accessed in a sequential address ok. So, why is it taking one as one internal cycle that is because LDR operation or is you know even uh, especially LDR SDR will be coming here. So, LDR instruction has to compute some offset both LDR and SDR they compute the offset using one internal cycle that is why you saw that after offset calculation the data transfer happens offset computation is one cycle and then data transfer is another cycle if you remember. So, one internal cycle is consumed by offset good now why is it one is If you see the accessing the the execution of a pipeline in a normal case, okay, when normal flow happens, you get one instruction coming out every sequential cycle. Please remember the pipeline movement like execution takes one less cycle. That is in a in, in this also decoding after that one. Uh, no, one cycle is taken for one sequential cycle is consumed by the instruction when it is pending that in the execution stage. So, that is why oneness is given. Now, why is this one n is given? Because when you are loading or storing in a memory, you are generating a new address to do that memory cycle, ok. LDR or whatever here we are talking about LDR or SDR. So, you are using a 
a new address you are computing every time it is not sequential from where the previous access was done. So, there is a non sequential access involved with every load or store ok. So, this is also executed understandable. So, this are the total amount. So, you may wonder why is that separately they are giving S and N because the S sequential cycle and non sequential cycle they all exactly how much time it takes depends on the memory being used ok. This is not fixed. Suppose if I in my system I have a 16 bit memory 16 bit data bit memory then everything I may use you know 2 to cycles for doing the access similar compared to one 32 bit memory. So, the processor does not know which what kind of memory is being used that is why it is easy to say in terms of this rather than saying exactly in terms of uh, suppose ARM processor is running in one metallic clock. Okay, just an example nowadays no processor is running in this load speed ok. You cannot say that ok it will take you know uh, 3 microsecond or whatever you cannot call absolute number you cannot give because it is tied to the memory with which the processor is integrated with that is why they are giving it in this format. So, you can always deduce from the memory that you are using you can deduce how much time if this instruction is going to consume for execution ok. I hope you understand this. Now, let us see again the PC is always unique it always plays a very important role here what are we trying to do we are loading R file ok we address whatever is there in R 1 into it effectively what we are doing we are trying to move the control flow or wherever R fifteen is currently we are moving to some location it need not be a particular location some location we are moving it to. Now, will not it involve flushing the pipeline because pipeline has already been filled with the, the two subsequent instructions ok which were was there after this LDR. Now, they need to be flushed and a new instruction whichever the R 15 new R 15 is pointing at has to be put into the pipeline. How much of time will be wasted to sequential accesses this much of time will be wasted that is why you see here got it. Now, this what is this one internal I might have put some whether I put here whether offset internal or you know 3 index or post index one cycle anyway is wasted internal cycle is wasted for computing the offset. So, one internal cycle is done it has to be spent. Now, what is 2 a? One is suppose when you are doing a LDR you are not loading the value in R 1 you are loading the value pointed to by R 1 see suppose R 1 is pointing at some other thousand again whatever is the content here is loaded into R 15 that means what this instruction is doing a non sequential access of a data non sequential access this is one non sequential access and another non sequential access is to go to the new R 15 and access the code. So, one non sequential one n cycle is for accessing a code and one n for accessing a data pointed to by R 1 got it that is why 2 n is here. If you do not understand listen to this particular explanation again you will realize you know everything makes sense ok these numbers it is very important you understand this. So, that you completely uh, you, are not, you are clear about what is happening inside the software. very good then now a store is a little different from LDR only slight different you can see that one eye is same as this this is also same this is also same but an additional thing why this is uh, due to store ok. Uh, that will be because of the 
store operation is involved the data value has to go out so that takes care of this particular additional cycle involved in the storing of value ok because the data path is consumed by for loading that value to the data set ok. So, this ends the summary now let us see what happens uh, just I want to uh, summarize this offset from base take a 12 bit unsigned binary or a second register offset could be a pre index or post index base from the base ok. Modified base value may be written back into the base or kept as is and LDR SDR has a byte offset which is affected by a NDNS of the processor ok. So, and then one more thing which I have not talked about so far sign extension is valid only while loading a byte and not while storing them I will explain you ok this is uh, will be explained in the next session, but just suppose you are storing a byte value into the memory you are interested in writing only one byte ok. Similarly, if you are signed byte if you are loading ok signed byte ok that is what I am going to be explaining in the next lecture uh, you know, immediately after this session. If you are loading a signed byte signed byte into a register ok you are occupying that the, the uh, byte which is being copied from the memory occupies only one byte, but if it happens to be a sign byte I want the processor to extend the sign so that it preserves the value ok. Any sign value will preserve its value if the sign bit is extended to any amount of bit even if it is a 64 bit value if you extend it all the way around it will be the same thing ok. So, that is why uh, when you are loading a, uh, a value from memory to the register because we are moving to 32 bit register you have to make sure that the byte is sign extended into the upper part of the register ok. Please remember this is uh, one uniqueness of story I will explain you anyway in the this work. Now, addressing mode 3 ok this is something to do with the half word and the signed byte what is the difference so far whatever we have seen in LDR and HDR we saw how to store or load a word how to store or word an unsigned byte ok remember unsigned byte. Now, we may be interested in storing a signed half word or half word ok or signed byte these are the different things that user or the compiler may be interested in doing. So, ARM processor supports it, but this is supported by a different mode which is called addressing mode 3. Let us see. So, this is the kind of instruction format you have to say LDR STR conditional pair and then you are supposed to say any one of them whether I am interested in doing a unsigned half word or signed half word or a signed byte. Now, what is half word 16 bit ok. Now, what are the other combination word and byte unsigned byte if it is a word you would have just said LDR or STR if it is a byte you would have said LDR B or STR B. So, this two formats are taken care of only this three things need to be taken care of. So, they have introduced the another instruction where you can say uh, with the LDR STR followed by these values ok. These are all like similar to what you used to do yes for a uh, whether to affect the conditional flag or not you have to mention this then accordingly it will generate the proper instruction uh, it will encode it in such a way that the intended transfer happens. So, I have shown this it is only possible with a pre index ok this is a pre index format you can make out right and then the optional write back is there ok and then this is the destination register. So, this is the complete format of the instruction and if you use this format if you are using a offset to post index format the same thing is true with the offset going out ok and there is no exclamation mark here because you are not you are always this instruction will be over writing back the value into the offset register you got it. So, if you are using pre index format this 
uh, post index format this but uh, actually this is remaining the same ok you have to append it with the one of these values we will see an example then it will become clear to you only thing what you have to remember is that the offset value is not as big as 20 you know 12 bits earlier instructions it is only a 8 bit value or you could also and then register offset is also allowed and then these two bits uh, there are internally used for giving the data type. So, effectively it means load sign write ok. So, it is split into load and store either load this or this or this ok only in loading you will be doing this, but in storing you will be doing a half word ok. So, when you are storing half word storing only is done and then store byte if you are doing you would have used a str byte instruction ok. So, you will not be using this instruction for a store byte because I told you store byte does not have a byte you know unsigned or signed it is only unsigned when you are storing it into the memory. So, str you could have used it. So, this instruction that is why it does not support storing other bytes only half word is supported because the str instruction does not support offered store it only supports byte or if you do not mention a byte it is only a word. So, this is what are the different things supported in the this particular mode 3 instruction. Now, let us see we have a precondition I am having this now let us choose a pen here for. So, what happens here I am using a load half word. So, load is what this one right. So, what is 0 to you have to add whatever is R 1 plus 8. So, when you add 0 to plus with 8 it is this one right. So, 34 comes to the lower side and 12 comes to this. So, what happens is when you are loading a half word ok you are loading into a 32 bit value if you are only loading a 16 bit value it is always moved into the lower part of the register in this case it is R 15. So, this value which is pointed to by this address this 34 6 here ok and 12 6 here is a little Indian. So, 34 and 12 6 here. So, this is the way it is done similar to byte if it has a byte was loaded it will comes to the lower part of the byte and then it was doing a sign x you know it was backfilling it with 0 when you are doing a LDR B ok you saw the example last time. Now, LDR H we are seeing here which actually copies 1234 and then fills the upper portion of the 16 bit to 0 ok. Now, let us see this what is it doing? R2, R2 is this for this value and plus 2 you can write either just a 0 ok At that time you do not have to mention a offset otherwise you have to say 2 because it is a 2 byte aligned addresses right half word means it has to be 2 byte aligned. So, you will mention it as uh, this one. So, what happens this is loaded C D A B and then please remember here I am using F C A it is a signed half word. So, when I say signed half word if the loaded value if the MSP is set the 16 bit value MSP is set in A A means what 10 10 can be represented by 1010 this is 8 this is 2. So, this is A correct. So, the 16 bit value bit 1 is the highest MSB bit is 1. So, that is extended here because the user is saying the assembler programmer is saying I am loading a signed value which is stored in this address ok. So, in this address so I want the sign to be preserved. So, when it is copied it will be sign extended ok that is the way earlier SH works. LDR SB is the same thing, but it is for B byte. So, when you are saying R2 plus 3, uh, 1 is here, plus 1, plus 2 is here, plus 3 is here, R2 is pointing here. So, AB is accessed, 
a b is moved here into r phi and then sin x and beta ok. So, check whether all the simulator does this you know sin extension properly, but but this is what is the intended purpose of this insert shaft. So, if you see a difference of between address 2 and 3, address 2 was only supporting word and unsigned byte, address 3 supports byte the signed byte and the half word accessors and so that signed half word accessors that is what I have given you example to see ok. So, I hope this is clear to you if suppose if it was in big big and mode then the organization of the data in the memory would be would have been different means the 7 8 would be sitting here and then because it will start keeping the value here. So, be a big Indian what how it will be 1 2 will be here 3 4 will be here 5 6 will be here 7 8 will be there in a big Indian mode ok. So, because the simulator is a little Indian I have given example for all four a little Indian mode only, but you should be aware if there is a big Indian mode how the memory will be configured and then this instruction when you execute they will pick a different values because it is stored in a different order in the memory. If you remember big Indian and little Indian is something to do with the way it is stored in the memory. Very good. So, uh, now another set of examples with a store. What are you trying to do? R7, you are trying to store it in R2. R2 is here, ok. And then R7 is having a value 0 1 and then it is a half word. So, that is why 0 1 is stored like this overwritten by this value why 1 comes here because that is the LS byte it is a little Indian mode. So, the LSB comes and fits in the lowest part of the memory. So, please you see that it does not sign extend or back you know with the 0 or 1 or whatever it does not do because there is no way it can be done along the on the memory first of all is it possible for the processor to do this. If it does it it will be wrong first of all you are overwriting into some place where the user was not interested, but even if user is interested in doing it they are supposed to get this value into the memory and then write back or they should have written a whole word with a all sign extended and written back, but you cannot do it inside the memory like this ok. So, whenever you are doing a a store it does not impact the adjacent bytes or word of words in the memory. Only when you are loading from the memory the register adjacent bits are to be modified because later on this program is going to be consuming this value uh, as a 32 bit value. So, if you have copied only one byte you have to know what is the you should tell the processor what to do with the remaining bits in the register, but that is not the case when you are writing into the memory user has some data in it and then I am interested in only overwriting a particular part of the memory. So, you do only that and leave it. So, do not do any sign extensions and it cannot be done also, but it is not done. I hope this is clear to you. Now, one more example we will see what happens I try I want you to tease it and then see what exactly happens and then see whether what I am showing is correct or not. So, that it will you can you know uh, validate whether you understood this or not ok. Now, this instruction what does it do this store str r 6 r 1 store the value in r 6 how much as it it has to store a byte or a word or a half word or a signed half word or a signed byte what is it supposed to do when you do not mention anything what does it supposed to do? It is supposed to store a word ok. So, the entire R6 which happens to be 4 is written into wherever R1 is pointing. So, so it is supposed to write the whole word you agree that is what it has done. So, 4 is written and the higher but now see the higher words are also bytes are also modified because your intent was to store a word it will do only what the instruction is supposed to do. So, it has done that now tell me what happens with this ok 
let me clear this so you can see what is written here. So, we are trying to get whatever is R1 is having, ok. And then please remember this two instructions are is in the same box. So, the each impact is there on the memory what we see, ok. It is not like this code and this code, this code is together. So, it is executed one after the other. Now, you are storing a again you are doing a store, but this time you are storing a half word in the location starting from R1 plus 2, that means this address, correct. Half word is ok, you are doing a signed word or a no, it is there is no sign or unsigned, right, in the store. So, you are doing a half word with whatever value in R6, what is R6 having the same R you know it is having 4 only nobody has changed it this instruction also did not say change it this instruction did not change it ok this is independent anyway this this instruction has not changed the R6, so R will be having 4. So, now what happens that 4 is written here, now again you see this byte is also changed because your intent was to store a half word, so it has to be a complete 16 bit value got it I think with this we are coming to an end I hope all these modes are very very clear to you I took little more extra time to make sure that I do not rush through and you understand the complete things what happens here. So, please try out all these instructions try out all the modes and make yourself clear with the examples ok, with the simulator and read up some books also, so that your understanding becomes clearer. Thank you very much for your attention, wishing you all the very best with assembly programming, enjoy the course the sessions which are coming up later, thank you.